in new, used, ebook, and rental formats. Available at the bookstore on campus or online at westfieldstate.bncollege.com. Join me, Tina Gorman, each week from 6 to 8 a.m. for Wake Up Wednesday, when my guests and I discuss health, wellness, and lifestyle reimagined. Community Radio. 89.5 WSKB. Sometimes you bend, sometimes you stand, sometimes you turn your back to the wind. There's a world outside every darkened door where blues won't haunt you anymore. Where the brave are free and love are sore. Come ride with me to the distant shore. We won't hesitate to break down the garden gate. There's not much time left today. Yeah. Dental analogy is a bit, and then yeah, we're good. We'll I think do that our slot. We'll say we're what our slot. Hey, we're on the air. <gasps> There we go. Welcome to Superintendent Spotlight. Here we're broadcasting live from Westfield Technical Academy. Um, and it is November 17th. Right? Yes. So, um, as you know, we do a, a, a day, right? We've been doing that the last few weeks. Mm-hmm. So, Saturday is National Play Monopoly Day. Did you like Monopoly? We were just talking about that. I loved Monopoly. I was always the banker, which <laughs> is ironic because money isn't my favorite thing <laughs> now. But being the boss, I was the was the too. that was my favorite thing of the game. I liked and handing out the deeds. Oh, oh, yeah. all right. We got to get Deb's mic. Say, something. yep. Now you go. Okay, there we go. So. Um, Today, uh, Tiger's Pride isn't open this week. It's our last show before before Thanksgiving. Thanksgiving. Um, what else? So there's no sc- no show next Thursday because that's we're right with our families. That's right. And then we come back December first, and we have the Westfield High School. We got the chorus, chorus. so they're going to yes. perform for us over there, uh, as they did before. We also have four songs today, so you're going to have to guess the year. So, and we're going to talk about the multi-tiered systems of support. So, Chris, who do we have today? Well, Zap, we have our we have. About half of, well, actually, one, two, three, four, five. We have five eighths of our central office administrative team. Today. We do. But you, as the superintendent, and mm-hmm. to your right and the viewers, uh, viewers left is uh, Mrs. Deborah Ecker, who is our Director of Special Education. To my left, we have Dr. Christine Shea, the Director of Assessment and Accountability, and to her left, Mrs. Susan Dargy, Director of Curriculum and Instruction. Good morning. That's so, a lot of yeah, titles That's right a there. lot of titles. And you're yep. the... You're the uh, Jack of all trades, master of none. Yes, uh, there you go. There yep. you go. Uh, Administrator of Interventions and Safety. So... Wow, we have some long titles. Huh? Yes. All right, so uh, I want to start. Let's talk about a little bit. We're going to go right to it. Uh, what is MTSS? And, um, and you know, we're going around to the schools to talk to our, our staff and about what this is and the model. And I know we had some slides. They're not working at the moment, so we're going to have to just talk about it, which is okay. Oh, yeah. We know we about it well it. enough. Yeah. Uh, and since we are giving the presentation, and I think this could go anywhere, so who wants to start? What does MTSS stand for, and what is the big premise? Well, as part of our uh, presentations, yes. we're using an analogy to explain the three tiers of the multi-tiered system of support. The system of support is a big umbrella that talks about or that encompasses all the things that we do within our schools to support students to achieve success. And all students are different, and so what they need to achieve success varies. And the three tiers... I was going to say, how many tiers are there? Yeah. Three tiers that we talk about are in the shape of, if you think about a triangle, the largest tier one is the bottom third of the triangle, encompassing the most students, about 80% of our students. Mm -hmm. 
um, can be very successful with the core instruction, the basics, the things that everybody gets. And then the next tier, uh, the little bit narrower part of the triangle, the middle, is about, I'm not, Deb, 15%. Mm -hmm. 15%. 15%, 15 yeah. maybe a little more. A little more, 15 to 18%, maybe. And then those students need a little bit more. And then... When the, we say a little bit more, it's support for to, to master the support. curriculum. Yes. Right? Okay. And then the top tier, the, the point of the triangle, top third, represents, or a little less than third, represents 2 to 5% mm -hmm. that need more extensive. Deb can talk a little bit yep. more about that because that part encompasses uh, special education, but not always. Right. Correct. So do you want to talk about the dental analogy with the tiers at the same time? Quickly? So well, I'm just, I think what I'd like to do is do the dental analogy tiers now, then we'll take a break and come back and yeah. relate it to education. That sounds and, good. And everyone has been to, well, the vast majority of people go to the dentist, right? <laughs> so um, true. And and I think people so you you can appreciate um, the analogy in that way, right? And and not that we all love to go to the dentist, but we we have to go. Yeah. So so when you think of tier one dentistry, right? And that's what everybody gets. What would be that? Uh, and you take it away, Christine or Susan. If sure. You wanna. Well, you I'll wanna talk about that? tier one. How's okay. that? Okay. So tier one dentistry is we all go to the dentist probably twice a year and get our cleaning. Right. And that is just what everybody does. It just keeps our teeth um, healthy, and um, it hopefully it's a prevention for other things to happen. Right. Th maybe we should go. And then how do you relate that to education? So basically all students are in the classroom getting the same general um, curriculum. Now, it may be like differentiated in the classroom for students. What but does that mean? That means that some students may need... Um, a graphic organizer, preferential seating. There's a number of ways that teachers accommodate, and sometimes it's even different um, levels of what's being taught. Mm -hmm. Okay. So, but everybody is in that general education classroom. Okay. That's and that tier starts one. to get into tier two with right. the differentiation. And just yes. to mention, for tier one, when you're at the dentist, they do some, they collect some data. So they look at, you know, are there cavities potentially? Are your gums bleeding? Do you need the this bite wing X ray? It rings a bell. Yeah, <laughs> we all yeah. hate because when they With put the that in your mouth, it, it hurts. The, it hurts and it rips them. Yeah, yeah. Exactly. Bite down. Okay, I can't bite down anymore so, here. So <laughs> I guess the equivalent in the classroom, and it isn't as painful. I promise. Yes, it's not. Okay. Is <laughs> that we're doing check ins with students to see are they learning what we hope they are, and if they're not, then. Maybe they need that next tier, which someone else so, may want to explain. But sure. What's the equivalent of that we do in schools of the data collection in the classrooms? I, I can kind of take that if you like. You so if we, if we equate the general education teacher with the dentist, you know, all, everybody goes, to, or most people go to the dentist. He serves, you know, the population as a whole. So the general education teacher serves all the students in her, his or her class. So, but all students learn differently and need different types of supports, tools, even accommodations to succeed in the classroom. So that general education teacher is teaching that same curriculum, the same level of curriculum, but they're using different tools to help them such as visuals, you know, wait time, graphic organizers. Um, and we also not only talk about academics, but I'll ta also talk about the social emotional. You know, do yes. you need to take a break? You need to go into the, like the, uh, do you need to stand up and kind of move around a little bit? Do you need to walk to the water fountain to get off some energy? Do you need to um, have some quiet time in the quiet area of the classroom? So. All those strategies can be used with all students in the general education class. Mm -hmm. And that's just really good teaching and practice for all our students. Yeah, and at much of our instruction and curriculum has assessment built into it. Something like, say that you're learning um, in first grade, you're learning about your, well, let's say kindergarten, you're learning about your letters. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Sounds and letters. Yep. And the teacher's checking in with you about what letters you know. And if it seems like, okay, we get to the middle of the year and you're still struggling with letters and their sounds, then maybe 
then you do a little assessment and you say, well, maybe they need a little more support to learn their letters and the associated sounds. But we also use the data we use. We use MCAS data for grades where MCAS is given. But what else do we use in the district to get a flavor of where the Well, is? we also every year, or not every year, three times a year, we do some benchmarking. Mm -hmm. So we have mm -hmm. iReady assessments, um, and we ha which is both in uh, math and English language arts. And that lets us know at the beginning of the year, what do our students need to learn? And do they need to be monitored more closely? Mm -hmm. And we check in mid-year and see if they're learning what we hope. Um, and if not, again, what do we do? And at the end of the year to see where they ended up. And the students who need more supports in between can be checked on more frequently. And we, we also, also use oh. Dibbles. Right? Mm -hmm. yeah. Susan yes. was going to talk about that. Do you want to literacy and dibbles, dibbles? And, a and advanced math, right. recovery, AVM. Very good. Those are some tests for early literacy skills, dibbles, yeah. and early numeracy skills, yes. AVMR, so that we can put interventions in place immediately when students are learning those early foundation skills. So dibbles is K to four, okay. but we would test students at the fifth and sixth grade level if there were concerns. We could oh, yeah. use dibbles up through eighth grade. Mm -hmm. All right. Um, so that's tier one. Yes. What else do you want to say about tier one, either uh, from the dental or the educational perspective? I, I would just <laughs> say that in terms of the social-emotional, it really starts with relationships, yeah. and I feel like that's something that is that's a, built part into of, that right. tier one, that it's really, um, we're always building relationships with, with our students, and if we're then getting to know them and see that there's some struggles or things that they're having difficulty with, then it may lead to some kind of assessment and a look at tier two. Well, and to go bring it, not to bring it back to dentistry, but I will for a second, but I hope you have a relationship with your dentist as well. Oh, definitely. Mine's right. a big Yankee fan. Oh, that's, there you <laughs> because go. Because you need to <laughs> trust. At least, at least that's what he tells you. Yeah, no, he dentist. is. But that is a good point yeah. because yeah. you need to have that. Our teachers have relationships with students and their families. Right. So that the trust is there. When our dentist tells us we need something additional we want to feel confident that they're giving you the right advice yes mm -hmm. because and the and dentist I, ain't cheap either just saying and i think also with tier one well all the tiers but tier one is we we do have all that data driven mm -hmm. um assessments and measurements that we can use in tier one but also just you know informal observations by the teacher some of their own checks and balances yes. that they use in the classroom all that information that they communicate with administration and you know the communication they get through the families is also important information to look at um, when we look to see if a student needs a little bit more absolutely so okay absolutely. all right that's tier one can we take a break? I don't know. I can't see if someone's in the book. Oh, yes. Yeah, we got a there. thumbs up. Yep. Okay. So we're going to take a break. We're going to play our first song. Remember, all four songs come from the same year. So try to remember where you were or if you were. Just say it. Okay. Here we go. <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> I've been practicing. Thank you. 
Support for the community programming of WSKB is provided by the Barnes and Noble College Bookstore in the Ely Campus Center, offering Westfield State t-shirts, sweatshirts, and gift merchandise, all of your academic needs, and offering textbook materials in new, used, ebook, and rental formats. Available at the bookstore on campus or online at westfieldstate.bncollege.com. This is Ken Stomsky from Ken's Den on WCPC 15 and 89.5 FM, Tuesdays, 8 to 10. Community Radio, 89.5 WSKB. And welcome back to Superintendent Spotlight. I don't know if you can he- see us, but I think you can hear us. Definitely can hear us. Yeah. So uh, there we go. We're back. Okay. <laughs> There's the photo. So look at Saturday is National Play Monopoly Day. All right. Uh, recognizes the iconic board game <laughs> that lands us on Park Place, Boardwalk, mm. or even Jail. Right? Mm-hmm. Monopoly. Do you like? We talked about you like Monopoly. I do like Monopoly. It's a long game though. It can take forever. That's probably why I didn't play it all that yeah, much. Yeah, it's too much. I used to play Risk. Did we to play Risk? I oh, Risk. Risk was yep, great. Yep. Clue is still Clue. my favorite. Um, so, uh, by the way, that song was Oh, What a Night, December 1963, and it was by the Four Seasons. And the year that it came out, it was number four in the top 100 Billboard charts for that year. So that's a pretty popular one. Uh, but back to Monopoly. Known as one of the most popular board games in the world, the object of the game is to collect as many properties as you can so you can create a Monopoly. When players land on your property, you get to collect rent, right? The more <laughs> properties you own, the more money you make. But watch out, there are taxes and other fees. Um, to win the game, you need to bankrupt your opponents and be the last landowner standing, which is why it can take so long. Monopoly has become part of the international popular culture, having been licensed locally in more than 103 countries and printed in more than 37 languages. And I want to tell you, I was in Leslie Lambert's office the other day, and she has a Westfieldopoly uh, game. Oh. There. I didn't even know we had a Westfieldopoly. That was a big deal for a while where people yes. were making their own, right? Uh, As of 2015 is estimated, the game has sold 275 million copies worldwide. It has been played by over a billion people. Wow. With the longest running game lasting, are you ready for this? 70 days straight. Straight? Going right through 70 days playing Monopoly. That is the record. Sleep breaks? Doesn't say. (laughs) Who had the time for that? I was was it like a tournament, game. like a world Must monopoly been, tournament? Tur- didn't, I don't know. I, I should have looked that up because it's pretty impressive. But here's a question that's not part of our quiz. We'll do that in the next segment. Uh, which mm. city streets inspired the Monopoly board game? Um, boardwalk. What's it called in New Jersey? Yeah. Boardwalk? And the, Atlant- the uh, Atlantic City. Atlantic, Atlantic, Atlantic City. City. <laughs> because the Monopoly creator, Charles Darrow, loved to vacation in Atlantic City. It was inspired by the names of the streets, right? So how do you observe Monopoly Day on Saturday? Put your banker cap on, (laughs) uh, right? And gather your family and friends together and play Monopoly. See if you can come out the winner. How long do games last in your house, or do you give up and then the thing ends up in turmoil? And, of course, take pictures and hashtag play Monopoly Day on social media. When we come back after our next break, we're going to do a 10-question Monopoly quiz, and you get a Monopoly to-go game as your prize. So that means you got to keep track. Yeah, I'll, uh, I'm I'm finishing last in this one, I'm going to be honest. It's multiple choice. You have a 25% <laughs> chance at every question. All right. Uh, but now we're going to go to Tier 2. Sure. What is Tier 2? Who wants to start that one? You want me to start that one? Okay. Yes. So Tier 2, uh, we talked about Tier 1 la- in our last segment, right? Something that you know, our, our curriculum that everyone gets, right, for our, you know, in, in our classrooms. And the dental analogy was, hey, we're going to the dentist. We're getting that checkup, right? So tier two for the dental analogy could be that we have a cavity, right? We have something that needs a filling, something that needs a little extra work in order to get, you know, back on track and get caught up. So it, that, that also takes place in our classrooms, not the drilling part with the teeth, but, you know, in terms of our students needing extra support, right, on top of what they're getting in Tier 1. The great thing about uh, Tier 2 is that not, not everything that happens in Tier 2 has to be done in a, in a different environment, right? So when we talk about intervention, 
sometimes the first thing we think of is, oh, you know, Chris needs Chris needs some extra support in literacy or Chris needs some extra support in math. So let's let's pull him out and let's put him someplace else and give him that extra dosage of what he needs. And you know what? That's we do that a lot. We do that. We do that quite a bit. But other times we can do that, you know, right in the classroom, too. So a lot of times for us, it's getting kids uh, from where they are uh, to where they need to be. And, and we like to, and, and Susan, feel free, and Deb and Christine jump in, but we love to measure things in our district with, with grade level, right? Yeah. Like where we are, are our students at ready for a certain grade level, right? Or are they ready that's at a certain... That's kind of the national level, too, yeah. I think. Right. But I mean, like, yeah, if we have a student that's in second grade, we hope that they're reading at second grade proficiency levels. But what we find over the, especially over the last few years, um, that's not the case. Right now, in a lot of situ- a lot of situations. In fact, meeting with uh, our reading interventionist yesterday, uh, or excuse, the day before yesterday, sorry, PLC day, we're seeing more kids now for tier two than we have in in years. So, how do we how do we give them that that little extra dosage of what they need to help them to get caught up, for lack of a better term, to get their skills where they need to be, um, where, to be on the same playing field that kids that are that are only getting tier one. And I just thought I'd bring it back to the dental analogy as well that, so if you need a filling, sometimes your dentist can do that. Right. So he or she may do it right there in the office. So you don't have to leave. Which is an right dentist, to the classroom. Which is similar to getting your tier two supports in the classroom. But sometimes there's a tier two for your dentist that you may have to go to a specialist for that. Ooh, that yeah. may happen outside of the dentist with a different person. And that does happen. And our goal. Orthodontist. Yeah, unless that's tier three. Mm-hmm. You know, it depends where that goes. But our goal is always to have our students st- always be in tier one and get that tier one. So you're always going back to the dentist for your cleanings, even if you go somewhere else or you're getting a feeling. So, a.k.a., you're going to always going to your general education teacher for tier one, but you may need the extra support in tier two. Or again, from the dentist cleaning to going for a cavity uh, to get or filled or something like or that. Something like that. All right, we don't like that Sorry word. To say that. Uh, but that's a very important point that that Christine just made. Mm-hmm. You know, so when folks hear that we we do at times have students uh, leave their general ed classroom to go get support in another area, it, it, we we make sure that we do that so that they're not missing that tier one instruction that they need as well. So that's a very important point. Why is it important in general that we're talking about this? I, I think it's important because I, I think it it lays the groundwork and reminds people that we have a foundation of using best practices and accommodations and tools to support all our students. And by doing that in the general education classroom, um, and possibly putting in interventions as needed, it can help close some of that gaps, those gaps that we're seeing to prevent um, additional services being needed. Right. I think it's all just that everyone's talking the same language, right? Yep. Right, using Susan. the same vocabulary. And I think, and Chris mentioned it, that we've always had these systems mm-hmm. in place, but we're also always trying to make better, efficient, use of time mm-hmm. because we can't we don't we have a finite school day right uh school year so we're working always to try to give students what they need but i think right now coming off of mm-hmm. the interrupted learning yeah. the need is much more prevalent and it might cause us to forget that we need to just slow down and do the same things we've been doing take the steps mm-hmm. but we might need to rethink what tier one looks like right for first grade students coming in who may not have had a typical pre preschool or kindergarten year of experience that they're not going to come in with the skills fine motor for example mm-hmm. that they did five years ago the group would come pre-pandemic in with. right and it do- but it doesn't mean that every single student in this first grade class needs 
tier two with an occupational Correct. therapist to work on fine motor. It may mean that we need to rethink what we are doing at the tier one level to develop those skills that weren't fully developed in the previous year. So putting additional scaffolds in, mm -hmm. an extra center. So when you say scaffolds, what does that mean? I know you're supports, about to support. Supports okay. to, to, I think a scaffold is a support specific to getting a student to that level the of the grade level. The that you need mm -hmm. to do. Right. right. So mm -hmm. if in first grade we should be able to hold our pencil in a way that allows us to learn to write the letters. Right. But the muscles have not been developed sure. to the point they need to be at to do that, then we have to go back mm -hmm. to using the clay to shape the letters and right. using forming. Um, we have Mat Man, we have a chalkboard where students take a wet sponge and make the letter that way, and doing all those things. Those are scaffolds in grade one. It was core instruction in. in Pre K and K, right? But now we're in grade one. It wouldn't typically be tier one, but we need to make it tier one to bring the students up to the level to make the progress to the next level. And, and so if you're, if okay, go ahead. No, well, I'm, I was going to say, I think what's key with the scaffold is that we're not lowering our expectations; that we're putting yeah. support Correct. in place to get students to where they need to be in grade one. And that's a very important point to to reiterate. It doesn't mean that. We still need to get them where they need to go, but we're not lowering the expectation. Exactly. Like with the dentist Huge analogy, point. you would still be doing your cleanings even if you need to get a cavity filled, you need braces. You know, it might mean a lot of visits to the dentist, but you still want to end up with like really nice, clean, healthy teeth. Right. The other thing, too, is we've talked a lot about the elementary level. We want our listeners to know that this is happening throughout Westfield schools, not just at you know, grade one or grade two or grade three at the elementary level. The MTSS is, is K to 12 and has a, and has a pre K to 12 and has a variety of different looks at, at different. And levels. it's not just so, academics either. It's no. social emotional, as Susan was alluding to Behavior. earlier. So if I'm in, so everyone gets tier one. I mean, I know the answers to these. I just, I'm yeah. okay. I just want to. We figured. Okay. <laughs> um, For the list. I'm, I'm playing a host <laughs> yeah. on TV yeah. here right now. So, um, but the so if I'm in if I need tier two intervention, am I getting tier two interventions for the rest of my life? No. Help me with that. Okay, Deb. So, if we're finding that Chris needs some has been receiving tier one. But he still is having some struggles. So then we give him Tier 2. Tier 2 has kind of given him a little more support in whatever the academics are, say reading. Um, hopefully that intervention, those reading interventions, are going to help him close the gap. Once he's reached a certain level where he needs to be at, then he can go back to Tier 1. Mm -hmm. Or if after some time Tier 2 does those interventions still are not quite making the mark, then he may need additional supports, which would be Tier 3. Tier, and that's a great segue because that's mm -hmm. going to be our next segment. So we're going to take a quick break and listen to our second song of the show. Here we go. <gasps> oh.
Support for the community programming of WSKB is provided by Westfield Bank. For more than 160 years, Westfield Bank has been an important community presence and commercial leader in the Pioneer Valley. With convenient full banking services in Westfield, West Springfield, East Longmeadow, Agawam, Feeding Hills, Springfield, Southwick, as well as Enfield and Granby, Connecticut, visit us on the web at westfieldbank.org. Live from Studio 120 at Westfield Technical Academy, this is WCPC Channel 15 at 89.5 FM, WSKB Westfield. And welcome back to Superintendent Spotlight. That song was Dream On by Aerosmith, and the year that it came out, it was number 51 in the top 100 Ooh. Billboard charts of that given year. Okay, But before we get back, we're going to do Tier 3 next. Wait okay? a minute, that only got to 51? That year. That, that year. year. Okay. I'm adjusting up slightly. Right. So my original um, guess. And um, so we're going to play a, a Monopoly quiz. There's 10 questions. There are multiple choice. You have a 25% chance of getting them right. Are you ready? We're ready. Oh, wait. Hold on. You got to make a scoreboard here. Keep track because. I want to be the car. Okay. Could you make me the car? I want to be the dog. <laughs> <laughs> There's the dog. What's your favorite? Christine. Did, did I yeah. take your favorite? Or the thimble. Oh, the, the thimble. Hat. The iron. I like the iron, too. <laughs> That's smooth. Yes. All right. Are you ready? <laughs> We're ready. Question one. Here we go. Which one of the four railroads in Monopoly was not a real railroad? Is it A, Short Line, B, Pennsylvania, C, B&O, or D, Reading Railroad? Short Line. We all are going to guess, oh, okay. right? You all guess, yeah. Susan is guessing short line, which is what answer? A. All right. Are you writing it down? I, uh, no, 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 no. no. You get it right. She writes oh, who gets I right. See. I go with short line as well. B and O. Short line. The answer is short line. Okay. There we go. Okay. That's all right, Deb. It's okay. I was just trying to mix it up. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> Number yeah. two. What color are the houses in the classic version of Monopoly? Is it A, red, B, purple, C, blue, or D, green? <laughs> so you got red, purple, blue, or green? A, B, C, D. Red. Yep, red. 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 The answer is green. Oh! The hotels are red. 
I just uh. went to hotels, that's why. Okay. In the original version, they were wooden. Yeah, but in Not classic plastic. Monopoly, houses are small green buildings while hotels are larger red Darn. buildings. Okay, number three. In what year was classic Monopoly invented? Was it A, 1902, B, 1935, C, 1937, or D, 1953? Dad. 35. A, 1902, so, so 1935, 1937, and 53. Chris, what do you got? 37. 37. You go. I can't 53. Say. I need those choices again, please. A is 1902, <laughs> B is 1935, <laughs> C is 1937, and D is 1953. All right, I'll go with 1937. All right, and the answer is 35. Oh. Deb, on the board. Oh. Okay. <laughs> All right, next question. In the board game Monopoly, which pro classic, right? We're not doing the special features, okay? okay. Which property are you most likely to land on? Ooh. The, the, the answers are A, Illinois Avenue, B, Boardwalk, C, Mediterranean Avenue, or D, Connecticut Avenue. So again, A, Illinois Avenue, B is Boardwalk, C is Mediterranean, and D is Connecticut. We're going to start with Christine this time. I'm going to go with Connecticut. Connecticut? Chris? Mm -hmm. Rogers? Connecticut. I agree, Connecticut. I'm going to say Mediterranean. It's Illinois Avenue. Ah! Up near free parking. Right. The most landed on property in the Monopoly game is Illinois Avenue. This is because the most commonly landed on space is jail. The most common number to roll oh. is a seven, and Illinois Avenue is positioned 14 spaces after jail. There's also a chance card that says advance to Illinois Avenue. Mm. So that helps. Mm -hmm. This increases the overall probability. Okay. Gotcha. You're so, learning stuff today, aren't you? Yeah. There we go. We're definitely learning by error this morning. Yeah. Sure. Okay. These are hard. They These are hard. These are wicked All right. Hard. Five. This should be easy. Okay. What is the most expensive property on a standard Monopoly board? Is it A, Park Place, B, Boardwalk, C, Marvin's Gardens, or D, Pennsylvania Avenue? Uh, we're going to start with Susan. Bo boardwalk. Uh, Deb. I was going to say Park Place. Okay. Chris? Boardwalk. Christine? Park Place. And the answer is Boardwalk. Yes. Yeah. That's where I always land when I'm going bankrupt. Mm -hmm. And that's the one that if someone has hotels on there, you're done. Cleans mm -hmm. you out. The most expensive property is Boardwalk. The property costs 400 to buy. The rent starts at 50 but with a hotel on Boardwalk, you can claim 2000 in rent. Yes. Okay. But not if it's mortgaged. Exactly. Good call. All right, six. <laughs> How many chance cards are in Monopoly? How many chance cards? Is it A, 14, B, 15, uh, 18, C, 22, or D, 16? So again, how many chance cards are in Monopoly? A, 14, B, 18, C, 22, D, 16. Chris Rogers. I, 16 is sounds, 16 sounds right. All right, Christine. 22. Okay, Susan. 16. 16. And Deb? 16. 16 is correct. Aww. There are 16 chance cards and 16 community mm. chess cards, right. in case you were wondering. Thank you. All right, next one. <laughs> Name one of the three uh, Monopoly playing pieces from the original game that were retired in 2017. Oh. Okay? Name one of the three Monopoly playing pieces that were retired in 2017. And there are, there's more than one right answer here. So your chances increase significantly ah, of getting good. a right answer. Okay. Is it A, the thimble? B, the boot? Remember the boot? Mm -hmm. C, the wheelbarrow? Or D, the penguin? A, thimble. B, boot. C, wheelbarrow. D, penguin. So are we guessing three? Or just <laughs> no. One? Just got to get one. Okay. I'm going to go with wheelbarrow. Wheelbarrow. Okay. I'll go with the boot. Okay. Thimble. Thimble. I'm going to go with the thimble. You're all correct. The thimble, the boot, and the wheelbarrow were oh. retired in 2017. Mm -hmm. They were replaced by the new and more popular. There's a T-Rex, a rubber ducky, <laughs> and a penguin, and I did not know that. Uh, I don't even and remember so, the penguin. That's new. It came out in 2017. Oh, it's only odd. five years old. So, All right, question eight. How many squares are there on a Monopoly board? Is it A, 44, B, 32, C, 40, or D, 36? 36. A was 44, B was 32, C was 40, and D is 36. Who's up? Anyone? I'm thinking. 44, 32, 40, or 36? 
I'm going to say 44. Okay. Christine? Mm -hmm. <laughs> 36. Okay, Chris. Yeah, I'm going to go 36 too. The answer is 40. Oh, that was my uh, second answer. Standard Monopoly has uh, 40 squares. There are 22 colored streets, four railroads, two utility spaces, three chance spaces, three community chess spaces, two tax spaces, one go space, one go to jail space, and a partridge. One in jail room. and uh, one jail and just <laughs> visiting space, and one free parking space. But did you used to put your money in free parking? Yeah, I don't think it was middle. part of the rules. No, but I think but everyone did a pot. Did yeah, they did a pot. Mm -hmm. Yeah. yeah. All right, question nine. Illegal. Two more here. Who's in the lead right now? Where are we? Scoreboard update. Susan with four. Chris Rogers with four. Deb Ecker with three. And Christine Shea with two. All right. Two more questions. Okay. Uh -oh. I can only Number uh, nine. How much money do you receive from each player if it's your birthday? I know this. A, $10. B, $20. C, $15. D, $25. So A is 10, B, 20. C, 15. D, 25. Now I'm doubting myself. I'm going to say 20. I don't even 20? remember that. Yeah. It's a card. Yeah. It's your birthday. It's your yeah, birthday. Yeah, I don't remember that card. The 20 sounds about. I remember rounded. the you won a beauty contest. Yes, that's <laughs> another one. <laughs> <laughs> so, so I'm going to eliminate that one. What are the other three? So A is $10, B is $20, C is $15, and D is 25 I think it's Chris's turn to go. Mm -hmm. I'm going to go 15 Something about 15 Okay. I'll go with 10 Okay. Susan? I'm going to say 25. All right. The answer is 10. No. Oh. There you go. You? Nice. Yes. The community chest card message with it's your birthday. <laughs> Collect $10 from every player. Okay. Last question. Question oh, wow. 10. What color is Pennsylvania Avenue uh, on the Monopoly oh, board? It. Is it A, blue, B, purple, C, green, or D, yellow? Oh. Is it A, blue, B, purple, C, green, or D, yellow? Well, I'm wearing all blue today, so I'm going blue. Okay. <laughs> Deb? I don't remember. I'm going to say green. Okay. Susan? It is green. And Christine? I'll go with green. It is green. Ah. So Susan's the winner. Susan gets Woo! the – Susan wins the belt this week. Well, wait a minute. The rest of us Christine. tie. The rest of you tied. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yep, five to four okay. to four to four. So there Susan go, gets Susan. our Monopoly. Go so Yay! Hey, you to your camp, and now you have a Monopoly game. Make sure you awesome. post that. <laughs> yeah. uh, awesome. Pennsylvania Avenue is one of three green Monopoly properties. The other two are Pacific Avenue and North Carolina Avenue. Sweet. All right, so there you go. So there's Monopoly. Thanks. We're going to take another break and play our third song, and we'll come back and talk about Tier 3. Here's song number three.
fight the duck. We're getting down. Thank you so very much. Support for Community Radio on WSKB is provided by Betts Plumbing and Heating Supply Company, an independent, family-owned wholesaler serving Westfield for over 50 years, specializing in plumbing, heating, and industrial piping supplies. On the web at BettsPlumbing.com or at 14 Coleman Avenue in Westfield. Live from Studio 120 at Westfield Technical Academy, this is WCPC Channel 15 and 89.5 FM, WSKB Westfield. And welcome back to Superintendent Spotlight. If you're wondering, was there actually a duck talking? That is true and singing. <laughs> <laughs> and so that song was Disco Duck by Rick Dees. Mm-hmm. And the year that these songs came out, it was number 97 out of 100. And the net, the last song that we're going to leave with is um, a favorite, but 50 Ways to Leave Your Lover" by oh, Paul Simon. Yes. <laughs> uh, and, Another classic. And this was uh, that was number eight in the year that these came out. So now you got to do a guess. Oh, okay. What year do you think these songs were in the top 100 Billboard charts? Uh, since Chris has no idea, we're going to start with his guess. Yeah, he's true. never heard of Disco Duck. Yeah, which that, I got to be honest, folks, I'd never heard that song before. So okay, now you got to download it when you get home. No, no, that's okay. I'll pass. Um, <laughs> might, I'm going to pass on that one, Zap. Um, Dream On is what's really driving me crazy here because. Aerosmith was one of my favorite bands growing up, so I should feel like I should know what year the album came out. But mm-hmm. that's not always the, the answer to the to exactly. the question. Exactly. Sometimes a song becomes popular later, right? Mm-hmm. Or ends up on an album again when they do a best of and reemerges. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I'm gonna go. I, I, I'm gonna seventy seven. All right, Deb. I'm gonna say seventy six. Okay, Susan. Seventy four. And Christine. Oh boy, this one's really hard. Um, but we are in the seventies, I think yes, we established. We are. The disco gave right. that away. Mm-hmm. I was gonna say seventy-eight, but that seems late. So yeah, but I'll say it. Seventy-eight. The answer is seventy-six. Go Deb. Deb. Oh, hey. Deb. Woo, nice. Deb. All right. We have a few minutes left. Let's talk about tier three. One someone take it away. Go ahead. So tier three is um now we have the student who has been receiving tier one supports in the general education classroom all along mm-hmm. um, and they need that a little bit extra so now they're also receiving that tier two um, and that's been happening but they they're still not being successful we're looking at the data from the tier one still we're looking at the data from the tier two still um, but um, they're still struggling and I'm going to use academically as an example mm-hmm. but this can also be social emotionally behavioral sure because we want to look at the whole child right. always um, but as an example we'll do with the academics so the teachers, the administration, the parents, everybody's feeling that even with all the interventions that we can provide in the general education classroom, um, we need to give them a little bit more. So we are in, we need to give them more from the tier two as well. So then we go into tier three. And that may be um, extra interventions. It may be um, a need to change to modify the curriculum it also may need to be a referral it may need to be a referral for a 504 or it may be need to be a referral for a special education referral but it's really important for us to get all that information from tier one and that information from tier two and if there's other additional supports being given prior to the referral because then we have to look and see that's all information that we need if we want to do let's say special education testing because when we get to the point where we do some special education referrals and testing we're looking for a disability Um, and in order for a child to be eligible for a 504 or an IEP we have to say that they have a disability and that's a huge statement Um, So we have to make sure that we are giving them every accommodation, every support that they need 
before we go that route. And on the dental side, mm -hmm. the um, dentist has done the cleanings, noticed the cavities, fixed the cavities, found that maybe uh, a root canal was needed Ooh. at a certain time. Now that's resolved, but still the bite is off. And they make a referral to it's when they the grind orthodontist. Your teeth down mm -hmm. to make sure that your bite fits. And yeah. So they're still getting their cleanings, Tight. right? But now they're going to do the referral, as Deb mentioned, to a different practitioner who maybe has specialized training. That's right. That the that the dental patient is going to have braces put on, and that's something that is more intense dental work, and a longer process. That's what sometimes happens with Tier 3 is the eight weeks or however long right. a Tier 2 support might really help and get the student back to where they need to be quickly. The Tier 3 can take a little longer. And the very important part about that is that the orthodontist and the dentist are collaborators Correct. in the dental patient's well-being. And, and so that in our happens case, in Christine, schools. How does that look in schools? Tell yeah, I mean that, so we have a number of specialists that provide supports and it's really important that our specialists are working with our general education teachers, our special education teachers, working with administration. And mm -hmm. one thing I really want to stress is families are our partners through the whole thing. Mm -hmm. You know, families are part of hearing how kids are doing day to day in our general ed classrooms and also what if they need more support and what is that support? So they are being informed about um, what's happening along the way. That's a really key part of a successful system. Okay, anything else on tier three? And if anyone has if anyone has questions on Tier 3, they can certainly reach out to us. 572-6403 mm -hmm. is our, mm -hmm. our office number. They could look at the District Curriculum Accommodation Plan. Which is on mm. our website. Posted on our yes. website. Mm -hmm. That really is... Uh, maps out how all this process That's happens. That's correct. Exactly. And you can also search MTSS on Google, and you can see the triangle that we were talking about. We wanted to be able to show it to you, mm -hmm. but technical difficulties through no one's fault. Um, but uh, we, we do, uh, you know, we, we want people to understand that this is how it works, and there is a plan, and there's not, It's we don't just put people in tiers because we feel like it, it's based on data mm -hmm. uh, and it's based on student performance. So, And we want all of our students to perform and give them the opportunity to succeed. So that's sure. why we have this multi-tiered systems of support, right? And I think it's important, too, for, for families to know that um, all these extras, all these supports and these tiers are all part of general education. Right. So, I, and, and as, as you said, Stefan, that we... We, we offer those throughout, and we can take data on it to figure out what the student needs next. So when they when parents do have concerns, they can ask what kinds of supports are being put in the classroom. Right. Absolutely. Okay. All right. I think that's our show. It's 10.03. We went a little bit over, but we started a little late, so that's okay. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, oh, I like to roll. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> we were on Susan time today. Um, but really, uh, I hope uh, you learned something on our show today. Uh, not just about tier one, tier two, and tier three, multi-tiered uh, system, multi systems of supports, but you even got some background on Monopoly. I hope we've inspired you to play Monopoly Saturday as a family. Break out that old board wherever it is. I do have a Yankees Red Sox Monopoly game that I have huh? never opened. It's still you got to leave that package. one in the package. I do. Yeah. It's still got the mm -hmm. plastic wrap around. I will never open mm -hmm. that one. That's right. But I also have a regular Monopoly game too. Um, but I haven't played in a long time. When's the last time you played? Oh, Monopoly? Geez, years, years. We play Junior Monopoly a lot with the kids. Right. So when we our families get together, that's one that may come out, and that's a lot quicker. Then it's fun, it, yeah. and it actually can end. It Without a, tears and fighting. Yeah, so. uh, seventy days is um, is ridiculous. Oh, yeah, that's that's a long time, totally. that's a long time to be committed to a game. So, all right, folks. So again, no show next week, but we want to wish you a happy Thanksgiving yes, from happy all of Thanksgiving. us Absolutely. in Westfield schools. Uh, and then when we come back, we'll be December first for our next show, and we will have the Westfield High School Chorus, and they'll be performing some uh, musical numbers for us, probably holiday themed. Absolutely. Um, but that's all we have for today, right? That's it. Okay. Thanks, everyone. Have a great weekend and stay warm. It's going to be chilly. All right. Thank you.
problem is all inside your head, she said to me. The answer is easy if you take it logically. I'd like to help you in your struggle to be free. There must be 50 ways to leave your lover. She said it's really not my habit to intrude. Furthermore, I hope my meaning won't be lost or misconstrued. But I'll repeat myself. At the risk of being crude, there must be 50 ways to leave your lover. 50 ways to leave your lover. You just slip out the back, Jack. Make a new plan, Stan. You don't need to be coy, Roy. Just get yourself free. Or hop on the bus, Gus. You don't need to discuss much. Just drop off the key, leave, and get yourself free. Slip out the back, Jack. Make a new plan, Stan. You don't need to be coy, Roy. You just listen to me. Hop on the bus, Gus. You don't need to discuss much. Just drop off the key, Lee, and get yourself free. She said, it grieves me so to see you in such pain. I wish there was something I could do. To make you smile again I said I appreciate that And would you please explain About the 50 ways She said why don't we both Just sleep on it tonight And I believe in the morning You begin to see the light And then she kissed me And I realized she probably was right There must be 50 ways to leave your lover 50 ways to leave your lover You just slip out the back, Jack Make a new plan, Stan You don't need to be coy, Roy Just get yourself free Or you hop on the bus, Gus You don't need to discuss much Just drop off the key, Lee And get yourself free Slip out the back, Jack Make a new plan, Stan You don't need to be coy, Roy just listen to me. Hop on the bus, Gus. You don't need to discuss much. Just drop off the key, Lee, and get yourself free. Support for the community programming of WSKB is provided by Comcast and Xfinity.com. Offering Xfinity TV, Internet, home phone, and home security services. Information on all that Xfinity has to offer in the Westfield area is available online at Xfinity.com. Support for the community programming of WSKB is provided by the Dunkin' Donut Shops of Westfield and the Sardinia family. It's nice to know that even as the world changes, Dunkin' Coffee remains the same at seven convenient locations throughout Westfield. 